Uh, and our first speaker for today is uh, Anna Belikova from uh, University of Zurich, Correct. and she'll be talking to us about algebra, 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 be patient with me, so I don't know or so much uh, about algebra as you do. But uh, so I'm just interested in them because they are interesting. Uh, so, so some kind of algebras are especially interesting to to present um, important topological structures. So so this is my motivation. And so let uh, let me just um, tell you so which algebras I'm interested in. And uh, so in uh, topology. The main object of study is the category which we usually call n cov, and this is the category of n dimensional cobordism. So the objects of this category are n minus one dimensional manifolds, and you can put any structure you want on this manifold. So, so usually you think about something or compact, orientable, closed perhaps, or not closed, or whatever you wish. And the morphisms are given, so for example, uh, uh, an M, which is uh, an element of the morphism space from X1 to X2. This is usually you think about this as an N dimensional manifold. So therefore, it's this N cop. And this N dimensional manifold is a morphism because you can split the boundary of this manifold into two parts. So and it's usually the joint union of minus x1 and x2, and this allows you to consider this manifold as a morphism from one part of the boundary to the other. Then you define composition in this category, usually by gluing along the boundary, and you also define monoidal structure, usually just by disjoint union. And in this case, like uh, the easiest example of this structure is a category of two cop. And this whole category is just generated by one single object, which is a circle. And uh, uh, the generating morphisms, so there is the object of the cop is just as one, and generating morphisms are so pair of pants in one way or another way, caps and cups. And perhaps you need to sometimes to switch to tubes. So you will need this morphism. So in what follows, I will uh, represent this morphism just by looking at their spines. So I will just, uh, so this I will represent by this diagram. This is by this diagram. So this will be a morphism like this. This will be a morphism like this. And this will be a crossing. Okay. Yeah. You are assuming compactness of the objects. Yes, yes, yes. I'm assuming compactness, exactly. So compact and oriented, yeah. Okay. And uh, so in this case, so you actually, uh, as I say, you can generate the whole category just by taking disjoint union the composition of these guys. And the relations uh, which we need to, to put on this object are on these morphisms. So it's basically associativity. So let me, so I think I'm, I'm not telling you anything new. Yeah, so see if I'm just writing, then you, 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 can, you can have co-associativity. This is just by reflection, this diagram upstairs. Then you can have uh, uh, compatibility of the unit and you will have the similar one again reflected. And then you will have uh, probably the most important one. Okay, let me, let me, let me draw then you, you will have the Rydermeister 2 move for the crossing. You will allow yourself also to, to do such things. And you will ask for, for this uh, identity, yeah, which is uh, co-commutativity, so okay. So. And, uh, and the most important relation is the called Frobenius relation. Also, so this is a compatibility of uh, multiplication, co-multiplication tells you that if you split and you go like this, this is the same as if you do that. This is the same if you if you do this. Okay. 
and uh, so actually uh, what you what you see is that from here is that um, uh, this object S1 in this category has a structure of a Frobenius algebra. Yeah, so, so basically a Frobenius algebra, just uh, let me recall this is a vector space in my case. So it's just a vector space with a multiplication, co-multiplication, unit and co-unit. And if you denote multiplication by this diagram, co-multiplication by this diagram, unit by this diagram, and co-unit by this diagram, then all the property of this uh, of this uh, Frobenius algebra can be uh, can be written just exactly in terms of of these relations. And uh, what you what you obtain out of it, so this is a Frobenius algebra. So you obtain out of it is the following theorem that. Uh, so this is kind of folklore theorem telling you that Tukov is a monoidal category freely generated uh, by commutative Frobenius algebra object, which is S1 in Tukov. And uh, as you probably know, uh, that uh, Frobenius algebra is commutative if and only if it's co-commutative. So therefore, I don't need to, to, to put another assumption. So, so this, is, uh, this is just a well-known theorem. So this is how in the 80s, the whole business about the QFT starts because this theorem classified topological quantum field theories in the following ways that if you, if you look at the functor which goes from two cop to any linear category, so I just take it vector spaces for simplicity, then uh, what you need is you need a, an object here where this S1 will be sent to. And this object need to be a Frobenius algebra. So, so this need to be sent A, which is a Frobenius algebra index. And so this is a classification of all TQFTs. So basically what you, so what you see immediately is a corollary of the theorem. It's a two-dimensional TQFT in one-to-one -one correspondence with the commutative Frobenius algebra. So this is the uh, beginning of the story. This is, I just wanted to recall you because my aim uh, in this lecture is to generalize the story to dimension three and four. Okay, and uh, so to do this, I will, so at the end you will have, uh, you will have a very similar theorem staying here. That's so some topological category in dimension three is a monoidal category, a braided monoidal category in this case, freely generated by just one algebra object and the same in dimension four. And uh, to produce this, so like the main tool, and I hope you will like this tool, this is why I'm presenting this here, is the idea is to replace this Frobenius algebra object by the Hopf algebra object. So this will be the main idea. So for, if we are looking for a similar result in this dimension three and four, so what we need to replace is Frobenius need to be replaced by hope. Okay, and so what is a hope algebra? So it's again, this is a vector space. It has uh, this whole structure morphism which we had already seen in the Frobenius case. So it's also multiplication, co-multiplication, unit for the multiplication, co-unit for the multiplication. So, so now th these guys, they built a bi-algebra so by algebra so means that instead, so again, so I'm again using the same notation. So I will present this like this, this like this, this like this, and this like this. And uh, you will need also one morphism, which is uh, endomorphism of H. And actually it's invertible endomorphism of H which is called antipode. Yeah. And I will present this guy just by putting plus or minus uh, on the line Yeah. So this will be my, so this is an antipode and with minus it's the inverse. Okay, so this is my structure morphism and the relation again, so other relation we had before, so like, uh, so associativity for multiplication, 
then uh, compatibility of M unit, then uh, associativity, so, so co, co, co associativity and blah, blah, blah. So uh, all what I had before, the only thing, Frobenius relation, you replace through by algebra relation. So now this guy, which was looking, so unfortunately, I think I cannot show you, but you all know this, so I don't need to. So this, you replace it through, through the following. So, so this is the compatibility of M and delta in the Hopf algebra. So this is a bi-algebra axiom. And uh, you also need few axes. Okay, you, you need a little bit more. So let me, uh, let me be here more precise. So I just, uh, what I'm not writing for you, it's, uh, it's the algebra and co-algebra axiom, like associativity, co-associativity unit and co-unit axiom, I'm not writing. So I'm just assuming you know all this. So I wrote for you this compatibility of M and delta. Then uh, there's com compatibility of um, eta and delta, which looks like this. Okay, then there is a compatibility of uh, epsilon and M, which looks exactly the same, just uh, and then uh, eta and epsilon. This is just nothing. So these are these are by algebra axioms. And uh, the the antiput will have. So here, here you see the relation for unit to co-unit. And uh, by algebra, sorry, the antipode, sorry. The antipode, it's um, has this axiom. And this is the same as putting the, on the other side. And also, I mean, if you put S and S minus one, then this is the same as not putting anything. So these are the antipode axioms. Okay, and um, let me just slightly generalize this notion of the Hopf algebra and uh, consider this as an also uh, Hopf algebra object in the category. So for this, let me take a monoidal category with the tensor unit, uh, which is also braided. And um, I will call an object of this category braided pop algebra object. So I will uh, I will call it EHRO. So this braided hop algebra object, uh, if this object comes into the, uh, equipped with this morphism, so multiplication, co-multiplication, unit, co-unit. And the antipode and the invertible antipode. Okay. Uh, and uh, this relation, sorry, this uh, structure morphism need to satisfy all the relation of a Hopf algebra. So just all the relation listed here together with the one. Oh, it's very hard. <laughs> Okay, so together together with this set of axioms, so this also need to be satisfied. So uh, no, so, so it need not to be commutative or commutative. So together with this set of axioms, and uh, uh, the only difference is that uh, instead of of this compatibility of M and delta, I'm not requiring braided compatibility, which looks like this. So remember my category was a braided monoidal category. So I have a notion of a braiding. So I can switch this either that way or the other way. And so I'm, I'm just taking a positive braiding here. And uh, so all the, all the previous axiom together. So this, this one replaced by that one defined me a braided hop algebra object in a braided monoidal category. Okay, yeah. Sorry, just to be sure I understand. You the corollary in the dimension three and four is you can derive all these relations, the red relation, uh, in dim only in dimension three and four, but not in two or so it's not clear. Yeah, all the relations you have written on the uh, top blackboard, this one, yes, this one, you can prove them in dimension three and four. In uh, for I, I'm, I'm, I'm not proving them, I'm requiring them. I'm just, I'm, I'm for the moment, I'm just with these definitions. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, I understand that this is a definition, but uh, in dimension three and four, when you said Frobenius is equivalent to off, 
No, 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 it's not equivalent. It's not no, no, absolutely, it's completely different. It's it's, it, this is just algebra. Ah, okay, okay. So, so there is so. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and so an example of such an uh, let me write it here also. So an example, the first example of this uh, braided hop algebra object is, for example, is a hop algebra. So just any uh, any hop algebra is a braided hop algebra object in the category of vector spaces with the braiding. Uh, given by the permutation. So this is just a switching. So, so this is exactly what, what, what you see. So if, if you are, if you are uh, braided monoidal categories, so in fact, you, you obtain this relation if you replace, um, if you take the trivial braiding. Okay, so, so this is a trivial example in some sense, yeah. Uh, but there are more interesting examples. And what I will propose now for you is uh, an example of a braided, Hop algebra object in three dimensional topology. It's like a fundamental <laughs> example in three dimensional topology. So let me do it here. Um, so this will be a, a, an example in three cop. So, uh, so I'm defined now a category three cop, and this will be a category of connected oriented. Three dimensional cobordism <clears throat> with connected one punctured boundary. So this is uh, this is just a topological definition. Uh, so this uh, category was first considered by Crane Yetta in the 90s of the Lubashenka walked on this category, Kerala walked with this category, and Habiro walked with this category. Okay, so I'm following the presentation of Habiro. And uh, so who are the objects of this category? So an object is just a surface of genus G with one boundary component. So let me... Uh, let me draw it like this. So this is an object two. So, so you see, this is just a surface. This is a boundary of the surface, a circle. And uh, to this, so basically it's a disc with two handles, one handles attached. Okay, so I will call this uh, F, G. So if I assume that I have G handle attached, then I'll call this object G. And this allows you to identify the object of this category just with natural numbers. For each natural number, you will have just, you attach as many handles as your name, natural number gives you. This gives you the objects of this category. Okay. Now, um, um, now consider a standard handle body. So to, so it will also start, so, so I'll present this handle body as a cube. Okay, so this, this will be my uh, genus G handle body, more precisely, three-dimensional one handle body. So, so it's just a cube. Now these handles are solid because this is a handle body and this is just a surface. So this is a boundary. So one part is exactly. So perhaps to make it clear, let me write what is the boundary of this handle body. So this uh, clearly the upper part of the boundary is just this FG. Okay, then you have the all sides of this cube as a boundary. So this is a union of um, disc times an interval. So I mean, S1 times an interval. So these are all sides of this guy and together with, uh, Square zero. So this is this is the whole boundary. So this is the upper boundary. This is the side boundary, and this is the 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 the, the, the bottom boundary. Okay. So this is this is my handle body, and now um, I'm ready to define morphisms in my in my category as a pair. 
a three-dimensional manifold M together. So this morphism will go, say, from G to G, G prime. And it's given by connecting. So, so this is a pair which M is a, a connected, compact oriented, <coughs> oriented three manifold. And this is phi, it's a parameterization of its boundary. So it's a map from FGG prime to the boundary of this manifold, which is actually an orientation preserve, orientation preserving homeomorphism. And I just need to tell you who is FGG G, G prime. So FGG prime, it's a surface which is obtained from the boundary of my handle body by removing the bottom boundary and replacing this bottom boundary with minus F G prime, okay? And so this uh, looks like this, that this is your G handles upstairs, then you have your, your cube and you remove, so and here downstairs you, you also, you have G prime handles. So here it's G and here G, G prime. So as you see here, so I'm, uh, I'm following, so for this example and only for this example in the whole lectures, I reverse the orientation of morphisms. So you see in all these pictures here, so for example, multiplication was here. It, I, I was reading this morphism from bottom to top. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was drawing this consistently. Uh, all morphisms were from bottom to top. I'm, I'm running back, so, so you, you don't need to, okay. It's, uh, okay, and uh, in this, uh, because, uh, because uh, what I'm presenting now, it was first written by Habiro in his bottom tangles uh, paper. So therefore I'm just following, uh, so I hope I'm not completely, so, so just tell me at the, at the end, I'm, I'm looking forward for the, for the feedback, yeah, whether it was very confusing that I changed the notation here, or it's better like this because you know already have here. So, so, so I'm I'm slowly perhaps it's next time perhaps I'll switch, but kind of this time I'm not yet switching. Can I just check that I understand? Sure, you've drawn the G handles come out of the cube, but the G prime handles are handles in inside, in the, inside, exactly. Exactly, exactly, so exactly. So this is the boundary, it's uh, it's really, it's minus, yeah? It's minus, so this means they, they are curved out. So it was a worm who eat the, in the apple, all this, all this holes, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So so I defined for you, so perhaps I, I didn't say uh, when to such morphism I consider to, to be equivalent, yeah? So what is the equivalent relation on this set of morphisms? So let me, let me also qualify, clarify so so equivalence so i consider morphism m phi and the morphism m prime phi prime to be equivalent in my category of three dimensional morphism clearly if i have an orientation preserving homeomorphism between them if there exists i don't know whether you see something yeah, so, so, so the people online, if there is somebody, so there is an orientation preserving homeomorphism, homeo, yeah. This is the first condition, but I'm working also with parameterized boundaries. So it's, it's, uh, so this need to provide a condition on the boundary. So, so phi prime is equal to the phi composed with phi. So if I restrict to the boundary in my homeomorphism, then uh, uh, I, I get this relation between the parameterization morphism. So this, this defined me, a well-defined um, equivalence relation on the set of, of these uh, three manifolds. Okay, and now uh, this is all very good. Um, It's also written there, yeah. <laughs> ah, this, this is not movable, yeah? Okay, this was a mistake. Okay. Okay, so let me, uh, let me, so you remember this picture still, yeah? 
Oh, 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 let me let me switch to this side. So is it is it too uh, too chaotic? In the middle, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle. So I think we we don't need all this. So we don't need Frobenius algebras anymore. I'm I'm going back. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. This problem. So I'm apologizing for this. Uh, this is the best I can do. So so now let me define a monoidal structure on three cop. You see, usually you would like disjoint union to be your monoidal structure. Yeah, this is not not what I would like here. So here I would like the whole category. So I would like to mimic this great two-dimensional case. So I would like to be the whole category to be generated by one object. So if I would like, if I will take here the disjoint union, then I will have infinitely many objects. So like as many essential numbers. So. But uh, if I define my, so let's say this is my guy. So this is my F1, this is my F2, and my monoidal structure will send it to F3. So this is, uh, this is my monoidal structure. So it's basically gluing by side. So now if, they, if uh, instead I'm, I'm considering this uh, tendon bodies with, with some perhaps something curved out outside, then again, my, my monoidal structure will be just gluing them side by side. So this will be my monoidal structure. And this has the advantage that the whole category is monoidally generated by F1. So this is this is why it's in this way. So this is, uh, I mean, from topologies, there is absolutely no problem because you still, you, you, you're considering, so I, this category will contain all three dimensional manifold just connected. Okay, so if you would like to study and disconnect it, okay, then you, you can, yeah. Okay. Then uh, composition. So composition one should so so here to have a little bit imagination. So first of all, so I'm stopping now from now on to, to draw this three-dimensional things because too complicated. So what I will draw instead is uh, such pictures. So it's just planar projection and the tube which is goes so the tube which is goes inside will be uh, will be like this. So basically this is a cobordism from two to one where I identify the object, so it's from F2 to F1, yeah? And this means that I started, I started here with my surface with two um, handles attached. And here I'm, I'm taking the tubular neighborhood of this guy just out. So therefore it goes from this, uh, from this uh, genus two surface to this genus one surface downstairs, okay? And I'm representing this in this way. And now I'm, let me take another example, which is, them from one to one, which goes like this. So it goes here and say it goes once more around the punch, uh, around the hole, and then it goes down. And so this will be morphism from one to one. And now I would like to tell you, so what is the composition of this morphism? Yeah, so this morphism should be composable and the, the composition should be morphism from two to one. Okay, and from two to one, so let me already draw this. So it has two handles upstairs and just one downstairs. And so how do you compose such, such things? So the idea is the following. So I'm taking this handle here. This is my handle. And I'm attaching this handle and just with, with, uh, with the tub tubular neighborhood of this one handle. This is how you glue cobordism together. So what does it give? So in this handle, so here perhaps, in this handle, I, ha I have two parallel red lines. This means that in the tubular neighborhood of, of this guy, there will be two lines going, yeah? So I'm, so let me, let me draw this here. So it will be two lines going like this. So this is what I, so, so I'm, I'm just glue this guy to, the, to, to this one. And then at the end, so what is below this, uh, this dashed line, Below, it just looks exactly the same as it, as it is. So I'm, I'm connecting the third one to the first one, this guy going down and this one going down. This is a composition. I think it's correct. So I'm just, I'm just put here. So if you look at what, what is here, 
it's exactly the same as what is here. So I, I connect with the first, with the third. No, the second is the fourth. The fourth is the fourth. There were two crosses. Ah, there are two crosses. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. So it was, uh, it was clearly by purpose here, yeah, just to learn your food. Then, okay, then this, uh, uh, so clearly, so we have already, so three cop, so I sold you as a monoidal category, so I would like even to improve this to a braided monoidal category, this is what you guys should like, yeah. I have so, a quick question. Yeah. So, uh, if you had, say, um, I was thinking, if you had, say, like, multiple handle bodies on the middle layer, instead of, instead of like, it was, like, say, two to two, then two to one, then it seems like you could, uh, it kind of matters kind of what how you draw because you could like say switch the like switch the positions of the two um handle things and then that would be different is it is this something like is, is there some it's probably something in the definition that prevents you from doing that but so, yeah. so perhaps I, so, so let me let me let me uh, let me try to rephrase uh, your question so just we will see whether i understand you correctly so are you asking the following so so i would like to to sell the following morphism as a braiding in my category, which is just braiding of two handles. And uh, do I understand correctly that you're asking? Uh, uh, I guess this, this kind of gets at what I was asking. Yeah. 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 So this is, is a, you're, you're asking uh, why it's not the identity? Is it is it what you're asking? Uh, I guess my I guess the point is that I guess what I was thinking is so they, something seems to be uh, and maybe I so I'm not exactly sure what the definition in this in this in this equivalence uh, okay. yeah. so it's because it's here mm, the boundary okay. is differently parameterized and okay. if you do this switch here it will not commute with a with a boundary map okay. or if you wish you. Uh, so what you need for example to 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 make this guy trivial you need to, to make a half the interest along along this curve and this curve doesn't bound so if, if I would have no boundary, yeah, then it would bound the disk. So so if it would be uh, like uh, this, so this if it would be no boundary here, then then I would can undo this without changing anything. But but in this case because it's it doesn't bound it doesn't bound the disk the, the twist which it's only if it's bound the disk it's you you can undo this. So ah okay. So see, you. see for it's so so basically the parameterization so so basically what it's it's a real three dimensional cobordism but the parameterization of the boundary is just fixed. I see. So it's just you. fixed that, by, that. by. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think this is maybe a variation on what he was asking, but I don't see how you went from over here where the sort of lower handles appear to not interact with the upper handles. Oh, no, 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 it's uh, so sorry, 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 uh, sorry, 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 uh, sorry, 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 they can interact. They can, so, okay. Sorry. So they, okay. they can do whatever they want. So it can be embedded in whatever way it wants, yes. Yeah? So, so they, they can, oh, sorry, if you wish, it can go here, yeah. It can okay. do whatever, it, it just, it just schematical picture and just, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so it's perhaps was confusing, but so, it, they are doing whatever they want. So this, but here I was just speaking about the boundary. Yeah. So CFO, I was not so careful because I'm I was here here FG. Uh, so I just introduced FGG prime. Yes. I just wanted to say what is the boundary. The boundary is uh, boundary of the handle body. Yeah. Okay. With, yeah. Thank but, you. But but if I have a three manifold, it's uh, exactly you just the boundary. It will be always like this. Yeah. And I just need to parameterize this. So I need this map. Or where is it? This one. Okay. Okay. Okay, identity. So identity there is always, yeah. So identity is just a picture where, so for example, here the identity would be, this goes down, yeah. So, so for every object you have the identity map, so no problem. Okay, and uh, and what, what I'm claiming now, and I don't know where I should claim this, but I will try already to claim it here. So the claim is uh, that F1 is a braided, Op algebra object in three cop. And to, to claim this, I just need to tell you that this guy is equipped with uh, all morphism which we need. So whom we need for to claim this, so we need a multiplication. And the multiplication, it's, uh, it's exactly what, so the multiplication, it's exactly the guy I, I have here. This is my multiplication. This is my co-multiplication, which should go from one to two. Okay, then I have um, unit 
which goes from zero to one. I have a co-unit, which goes from one to zero. I have uh, S, uh, which goes as follows. So here you have a positive braiding, positive twist, and here you go like this. And S minus one, where you replace everything with a negative. So this looks like this. So it goes here, it goes like here, it goes here, and it goes here. Okay. Uh, so uh, it should be, it should be, it should be, it should be red color. It should be red color. Okay. Okay. And so you uh, clearly you can imagine how to prove such a thing. Yeah. So it's braided whole algebra object. This is completely algebraic proof. You just go through the list of the axioms and you just uh, draw this beautiful picture and you don't forget how you compose. Yeah. So, but I can do for you. So I thought I have a lot of time here. So let me do two. Two examples. Let me stay here and and prove the two examples. And you can, in the meantime, when I'm already cleaning this board, you can already start to, for example, to prove associativity of the multiplication or co-associativity of the co-multiplication or unit and co-unit axioms, which I'm just removing. Okay, so let me just, to show you that there is no mystery in this, in the story. And uh, actually you can, so if you like the grammatical calculus, there is no problem. Yeah, uh, empty, empty picture, empty picture. So a morphism according to the monotonous would have nothing at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is in the answer code? Did you just a little pink? Yeah. Uh, what does that represent? So, so you are. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is just uh. So here's the surface. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this uh, red line represent a um, handle attached to the surface. So you just uh, twist this handle. It's, uh, it's distinct from the straight. Yes, it's distinct from the straight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because uh, I mean, the attaching maps are all fixed and so on. So you cannot. Okay, so, so let me. Um, let me uh, let me show you if you, let me show you perhaps this uh, compatibility axiom. So the proof of the claim is uh, just by checking the axioms. Okay, and uh, so let me let me do this one for example. So how you would do this? So let us draw first the left hand side of this equality. So this amorphism from two to two. So you're starting like this. And uh, um, you first draw the multiplication and then the co-multiplication. But remember in the co-multiplication here, you have two strands going through the handle. So this means that here I need to, to have two strands going through this one handle. And then I need to, to put exactly the diagram which I have there for the, for the co-multiplication. So I have this one here and I have that one going this way. Okay, so this is, this is a diagram for left-hand side. Okay, and now I have to draw the diagram for the right-hand side and we should check that they are equal. Again, the right-hand side, it's also from two to two. So it will be like this. So now uh, I start with two co-multiplications. Uh, so it will look like this. So it's uh, again, two, two guys going through the handle. Here, two guys going through the handle. And then uh, you take this one and this one like this. And here you take this one and this like this. Then you take uh, braiding between the middle guy. So the braiding will look like this. And then you multiply what is left. 
And now if you if you pull this strand up and this strand up, you will find this picture. Okay, so then perhaps one more relation I will show you. So, so basically applying epsilon is just forgetting the strands. So if I apply epsilon to some strands, this was about monoid of unit equations, just you forget, you, you remove the strand which you had before. So, so let me let me show you also the following M1 tensor S. So this is just a, a and I will not, I will probably not draw the other side. So this is a morphism from one to one. Uh, you start with data, then you are producing S on the left-hand side. So this S on the left-hand side, you are doing this one and then you multiply. And now if you pull this trend up, this was all, so this will produce and then pulling all down, you will see that this is actually the same as this one. And this is composition of epsilon of epsilon and eta. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do the other one. So, so I would I would really suggest you to, to exercise. If you will have any problem, just come to me. I have drawn them, all of them. So I have them with, with me, I can show you. Okay. And uh, now, so you see it's, it's it's a beautiful structure, yeah. It's a, it's a really beautiful structure which you have graded of algebra object in this three dimensional cobordism presented in this way. This is great. Uh, uh, however, this morphism which we have here, so just all this morphism, there is no chance uh, uh, that they will generate you the whole category of three dimensional cobordism because you you need. So what you will generate, you will just uh, uh, manifold embedded in R three. So, so also these pictures were essentially three dimensional. So, so everything what I can embed in, in R three, I will get this way. But uh, in general, you know, we have this uh, theorem of Kirby, which tells you that every three dimensional manifold can be obtained by surgery from S three by surgery on a link. And so, what we what we need we need to add. So, if you would like to have this three cop to be generated by F one or generated by some algebra object, we need to put more structure as just braided Hopf algebra. Okay, and this more structure, it's uh, so I will need a few additional morphism, and this is, I think, where I, I really will change the board here. Okay, and uh, so, so the idea is to generate three cop. Uh, so we will need some additional morphism. So, so the first one, it will be a ribbon element. As you may expect already. So the ribbon element, it looks like this. It's endomorphism of uh, uh, so I go, sorry. So it's this one. And um, here, so for the other morphism, you, you have a choice. So you either take integral and co-integral. So the integral is just, uh, you see, uh, so uh, integral produce you a uh, close component. This was not yet before. So this, this is exactly the surgery component. Or co-integral and the co-integral uh, looks like this. This is an element from zero to one. And this is, uh, it looks like this. So, so you either, so you, in any case you need, you need this ribbon. And you 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 take this two, or instead of this two, you take a so-called hop pairing. So you can uh, you you can take pairing, which just looks like this. So it it goes this way. So this this is my pairing, or you do co-pairing, uh, which just looks like this, uh, which just goes from nobody to. So, so, so basically what I would like to emphasize that you need as generator either these two guys or these two guys. This is your choice. So Habiro, for example, choose these two. So, so, so basically, basically it's enough to, to have pairing and you can define co-pairing or you can, you can take both of them 
messaging rate and just more relations. And this one? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this you need. So so either you take Z, Z, oh, and Z, okay. or you take Z, Z, and Z. So this you take in any case. Okay. So so this is a uh, this is a ribbon ribbon morphism. Okay. And then uh, uh, this, uh, so using also this generator, so uh, I'm claiming that you can produce uh, every three-dimensional source. Okay, so I'm, I'm not clear. So we will see in the sequel, yeah. So can, can I talk about that, say, uh, just saying? No, I'm, I'm hearing him, so very good. So uh, that statement that we can put, pick either one of those two uh, pair of morphisms saying that uh, half algebra is Frobenius, we can make it Frobenius either using integrals or just saying it has a pairing or co-pairing. Is it something like that? Uh, so I would not, I would not claim this. Yeah, so, so there, there is a complicated relationship between this a kind of Frobenius structure, but uh, so, so I, I'm just for the moment, I'm just claiming we need this, either this two or, or this two, yeah. And then I'm, uh, I can define for you the claim is that all of these relations from braiding on down plus these relations. I didn't put relation on them yet. Uh, not really. Yeah, generators. So just, okay. uh, exactly. All of these this, this just, I just added new, new generators in the morphism spaces. And the claim will, will uh, so, so if I will, uh, if I will have time, so is it okay? So I can also move it to the next lecture. I don't know whether you are, uh, whether you are, you can survive a long definition, which will take but, probably more than two more. You're reaching for yes, I, I will. Yes, but but it falls down. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um. So and now this is the definition is that uh, braided hop algebra object H is called a zero. Hope algebra. If it comes equipped with a ribbon element, so pairing, co pairing, satisfying the following axioms. And now there will be a list of the axioms, but this is really so. Okay, let me also tell you that the ribbon element I will represent like this. So, so don't, don't, so you, you can distinguish this from S uh, because S it was uh, morphism. So it was endomorphism. Now it's from one to H. So say for it's ends with a plus. So everything put ends with a plus or ends with a minus, it's just a ribbon element. Okay, then the pairing I will uh, represent. So this is from H. So my pairing, uh, the presentation for the pairing will be that. And the presentation for the co-pairing will be this one. Okay, and now I'm I'm uh, I'm writing you the full set of relations. So the relation, the first is so if you put here plus, this is the same as putting here. So this is just uh, it's a central element. It doesn't matter whether you multiply the ribbon from left to to right. Then uh, if you multiply v with v minus then this is just one. If you put epsilon on your ribbon element, this is uh, kills everything. If you uh, compose with S your ribbon element, then this is the same as a ribbon element. So it's invariant under S. Then uh, this, this axiom you can take as, um, so this is basically a delta of the ribbon element. Yeah? And uh, this is, uh, can be expressed through the co-pairing in the following way. So basically you can you can also multiply this V minus one here and you will get the definition of a, of a co-pairing. So say for co-pairing, so basically you can take this as a definition of this guy, if you wish. Okay, then uh, there is such a guy, which is the same as this guy, which is the same as this guy. Then uh, pairing and co-pairing are hope pairing and co-pairing. So this means this and also this. Okay, then uh, the pairing and co-pairing are not degenerate. So you have a zigzag. Uh, you have a zigzag, which is like this. 
okay then if you multiply if you multiply two ribbon elements this is the same as such a thing and this is the most important axiom probably now is uh, a joint action so if you act adjointly on a strand then this is the same as uh, and here you act on this strand where so i'll just i finish the axiom and then i'll define the joint action and here it's also plus this you can always remove and this is uh, plus and plus this is the same as so these are all these are 12 axioms is and, there a, an exam let me let me define this this is the same as you multiply then you you take you go with your strand here you put here antipode and you you join there so it's a, it's braided a joint action is, so is there an exam that relates the ribbon structure with the braiding it has a ribbon structure yeah it's within, so it has a ribbon structure exactly so let me let me write for you what is a ribbon structure so it's it's a ribbon category yeah no i mean the, the, I, I, yeah it's, uh, so the, it's exactly it's a ribbon cop algebra yeah yeah so um but i think i'm already over the time okay, yeah. yeah so so we will discuss ribbon uh, structure after the thing but basically what i will so there so probably there, there so in the next hour the theorem will be that uh three cop is equivalent to the braided monoidal category freely generated by Habiro of algebra. We have any questions? So the, like the integral picture? It will come next. No, no, so if you want to, so you say that represents a three, uh three space with boundary being f1 and f0 so that circle means you do a I zero side. surgery exactly zero right. surgery exactly okay. i do surgery in this component yeah okay yep. i have two questions so one is for there's a kind of a series of them in the middle of that in the middle line not the first one but the second remaining ones that you i feel like you can make sense of it kind of flipped right do you also have those flipped relations this, this, uh, so it's, this is a braided hop algebra object. So all 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 relations which which uh, which are which are needed for this, I I'm assuming. So, but I was saying that like you have you can flip those 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 around those those four those three in the yeah like that one. You could also have it flipped. Flipped. I don't need them. Okay. So, so there are so this uh, this axiom has a lot of consequences. I see. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And you. Yeah. And I will. I will come after. So in the, in the second hour, I will come to consequences. Cool. And my other question is because this is just kind of because of the board in the in the bottom row, second from the right is on the very right hand side. Is that a is that like that's the um that's the unit there? No. Um, is it no, plus no, plus it's, all, uh, it's all ribbon elements. It's all ribbon. Okay, thank all you. ribbon elements. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a little confused. Maybe I just didn't understand what the diagrams meant. But like this ribbon morphism that you drew, I would have thought that it went from H to H, right? Or from F1 to F1. Exactly. So this one comes from H to H. Yeah. Right. And this, and but, but it's uh, so and you can you can see this one as uh, multiplication with this element. So you take x and x goes to x multiply with the ribbon element, yeah. And uh, but you can also consider the ribbon element as a morphism from one to h. So and and this uh, so I'm just following Habiro axioms. So this this axiom so this is always so I will switch in the next lecture to so I will mainly using uh, uh, ribbon ribbon morphism rather than ribbon element, yeah. Okay. yeah. But 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 you always you you can you you can have both of them, yeah. You can. Okay, thank you. We found the zero algebra. Like, like, is there some systematic construction of zero algebra in that? So, this is question to, to the audience. Yeah, so, so I mean, uh, so this is exactly why I'm, I'm giving this lecture. I, I would like to have so, uh, so what I will produce is an example of this. So every quantum group gives an example of this. Mm -hmm. 
So every so basically, so another theorem will be that any unimodular factorizable ribbon hop algebra is an example. Unimodular factorizable ribbon hop algebra. Produce an example, but uh, it's uh, but uh, it's uh, you see. So for example, here there are there are so this structure is, uh, but but it will be like um, not with the usual Hopf algebra structure, but with so-called transmuted Hopf algebra structure. So so you you can construct something which is which is that out of every. Yeah. I have one last quick question. I just realized so, so they also have like is it the new or v minus minus one power and so that goes the opposite direction and is there a relation for how that relates to the the thing with the plus that you drew sorry what what I so there's like a you should you it seems like you have like the is it I don't know if it's a new or a v plus or minus one from one to h right so there seems like there's a, a minus one which maybe does that which um is this minus one is there Oh, so there's there, yeah. This is, this is just yeah, yeah. So I mean, this is an invertible central element, ribbon uh, element, and it just has uh, uh it, it has a inverse. I see. And if I multiply v with v minus, I'm I'm going I see. to the unit. Cool. Sorry, it's just hard. It's hard. I didn't it's hard to, to read. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Let's thank our speaker again.